Okay, it's 9.35, so I think we will start now. With us this morning, we have Ahmad Nuraimin, uh, our tutor for this workshop, who is also in his final stage uh, thesis under Recursive Studio. <coughs> it is a pleasure to have uh, him here with us this Friday morning to teach us this uh, new software skill. So just a quick introduction. Um, basically, uh, what we'll be learning today is parametric design. Uh, the term parametric actually originates from mathematics and refers to a certain parameters or variables that can be edited to alter the end result or equation of a system. So basically, it's um, why, why we use parametric is basically something like if you're experimenting to bake a cheesecake without wasting any ingredients, I would say, where you can manipulate the parameters which are the ingredients to get the final cake. So later on, I mean, I mean, will be teaching us how to bake. I heard lah, something about baking. <laughs> so okay, uh, without further ado, I would like to uh, hand over the session to Noramin to carry on with the workshop. Okay, hi, assalamualaikum, very good morning. First of all, my name is Amin. Uh, I'm a thesis student in UTM. Currently doing my final design thesis in recursive design. Uh, uh, as for today, I will be teaching you guys on uh, some introduction, uh, just an introduction class to Grasshopper and uh, and Rhino. Uh, I've been using uh, Rhino and Grasshopper since uh, I was in degree, so uh, I have quite a few things that I would like to share with you guys, uh, especially in doing parametric designs. Uh, just so you know, um, in terms of uh, rhinos and grasshopper, there are two types of uh, application yeah, we can do. Okay, I'll start present now. Eh? Okay, uh, in terms of uh, rhino and grasshopper application, uh, there are two ways to kita model in both of these softwares. Uh, actually, uh, and as for today, kita akan mainly focus on grasshopper dulu and then just a little bit on rhino, even though it has more flexibility compared to other compared to other software such as SketchUp. Uh, more or less it's just like a SketchUp means we have to model the thing from the start. And it it, it, it is a physical model and kita tarik wall and kita tarik a surface and we do the protrusion, extrusion and everything. But when it comes to Grasshopper, it's about the programming, the coding. If you can if you guys can see my screen, uh, on the right side me is the Grasshopper, is the Grasshopper definition. While the on the right side, on the left side is the Rhino. So the all the modelings is being done in Grasshopper, bukannya in Rhino in in Rhino in your workspace. I hope you guys can understand that. Uh, uh, one of the abilities, one of the advantage of kita use uh, to use Grasshopper ini is the ability to tweak everything. So you to to tweak everything without having to construct it from the start. Maksudnya, let's say lah, I've already uh, designed the model untuk kita for today, uh, for, for our class today uh, in this uh, in this Rhino workspace. As you can see, this is the preview in the Rhino workspace. The special thing about Grasshopper is the, it has the ability to kita change everything from the start without having any effort untuk uh, design everything back from zero. Okay, let me show you an example. Okay, this is the form yang kita dah buat. Let's say lah, uh, I've decided I want to change the form, but at the same time, I want still I will still want to apply the same uh, facade design. Okay, I can change the. Let's say I want to change the segment of the segment of the form. Let's say to hexagonal, to uh, to square. I just change the size number of the polygon. And then it will take quite some time, and then we can change to a rectangle. Okay, now did I change the form? Let's say lah, I want to change the radius of the form from uh, or for originally the ten meters, uh, ten meter radius. But let's say I want to make it bigger, or make or make it smaller. I can change it to five, and then they will change the uh, the form. Okay, uh, first of all, kita can start with. Uh, the, uh, the the design of the form first. What are we going to do? Uh, what are we going to do today is 
something yang a bit advanced but at the same time it's very versatile maksudnya you can change it to everything you can change it to to uh, different types of polygon you can change the direction you can change the the length and the height and everything uh, okay uh, first of all okay i tutup dulu eh everyone dah buka kan i i advise you guys untuk letak grasshopper and i know in this coordination in dalam your screen maksudnya on the right side is your grasshopper and the left side is rhino so that kita boleh nampak exact, uh, exactly, the, uh, exactly the same thing tapi kalau korang ada dual screen tu boleh letak grasshopper on the on the other screen and rhino on the other screen okay let's start with uh, grasshopper okay go to the grasshopper punya workspace and then double click on the canvas dia akan keluar enter search keyword and then you guys type polygon okay now kita bila kita type polygon dia akan keluar this polygon dekat dalam uh, rhino workspace okay kalau tengok dekat rhino ni dia akan ada uh, dekat polygon ni dia ada plane uh, radius uh, segments and uh, fillet radius so just double click again on the workspace on the grasshopper and then type uh, five uh, sorry ten the ten ni will and then kita connect and ten ni to the r which is the radius maksudnya radius of the poly, this polygon is ten meter and then they say lah like, kita nak guna a hexagon and then double click again on the workspace in the grasshopper and then type six and then connect there by the sides on the segments of the polygon okay and then for fillet radius kita tekan double click again on the workspace in the grasshopper and then type one and then connect by the fillet radius Okay, now kita dah ada kita punya polygon. Okay, now tapi disebabkan polygon ni uh, dia sekarang ni dia tengah exist on the XY plane. Maksudnya dia tengah horizontal on the XY. Uh, for this purpose of the, uh, this class, kita akan buat dia, the shape is to be a bit horizontal. Maksudnya dia akan a bit elongated. So, I want you guys untuk buka di untuk rotate kan this uh, rotate kan this polygon, what you have to do is tekan move, double click on the grasshopper and then type move and then again double click tekan Y, Z and then select Y, Z clean okay and then double click on the workspace, tekan Z and then select unit Z and then double click again and then just tekan 10 Okay, sekarang kita akan change the plane and then from move ni G from geometry connect to the P kita akan tukar dia punya plane from XY to YZ tekan pada connect pada G and then Z ni is the vector is dia punya, uh, dia punya vector yang kita nak ubah is connect to the T and then 10 ni pada the factor of the uh, Z factor Okay and then you guys can select all these four components right click when preview off Okay, dapat eh? Okay, the next one kita akan try multiply kan this uh, polygon untuk jadi a frame like uh, repetition. Doing uh, to do that is kita double click on the workspace on the grasshopper and then click move. Type move and then ambil move. And then connect P polygon tu to the G, so it's the geometry. Tapi sekarang kita tak ada the direction of the movement yang kita nak. So in this case, kalau tengok on this left uh, bottom left side ni kita ada x, y and z exist. So sekarang ni kita nak multiply this frame in x direction. So kita tekan double click and then tekan x. Ambil unit x. Okay. And then connect dia pada t. Okay and then kita akan try multiple kan dia. Multiply kan dia. Just double click on the workspace and then type series. Okay, s connect to the factor of the x ni. Okay and then kita akan s ni is the start and n is the step and c is the count. This is the punya how many repetition yang kita nak buat. Okay. Okay now go double click on the workspace on the grasshopper and then click zero. Tekan pada s and then let's say kita nak go one meter per frame. A difference between each per frame is one meter. Tekan one and then connect pada n. And the next one is berapa banyak frame yang kita nak which uh, which in this case let's say lah kita letak 50. Double click again and then start 50 and then connect pada C. Okay now kita dah ada repetition of the hexagonal frame tadi. Uh, 
uh, one meter for each uh, one meter in distance for each uh, between the frames and ada lima puluh frames. So in total dia ada lima puluh dia ada lima puluh meter lah basically. So you can off the polygon in the first place. Uh, right click and off and preview dia. Okay. And then next thing yang you have to do is kita kena cari the center of the polygon. So in order untuk dapatkan center of the polygon tu, right click double click on the workspace and type area and then select area and G connect to the geometry and once kita dah dapat geometry ni dia akan dapat the center point of each frame and then from the previous ni click YZ plane ni and then control C and then control V that's how kita kita copy components yang kita dah pernah buat dalam grasshopper workspace okay then from C ni, kita tukar dia punya plane dia kepada YZ and then since kita nak kita nak tweak lagi form ni supaya form ni jadi lagi interesting and it, it, dia akan lagi ada banyak parameters yang kita boleh tukar so apa yang I want you guys to do is to type double click on the surface on the whole space and then tekan deconstruct ambil this component, dia akan keluar this deconstruct This is the evaluation of the points kita nak dapatkan di X, Y and Z coordinates of the points yang center points yang kita dah dapat tadi. Okay, in this case kita akan evaluate the X punya point because uh, the, the, the repetition is dia berlaku dekat X punya directions. So next one is you guys have to type double click on the workspace and then type bound and then again double click remap numbers Okay. And then connectkan X by the N which is the number and then N ni and I ni is by the S which is the source of domain and X ni by the V. Okay. Then you guys boleh off kan yang before. Okay. Then the next one is double click on the workspace and then type graph mapper. They can keluar this, this component and then connectkan R pada graph mapper ni okay and then select these two component remap dengan bound tadi and then copy paste control C control V and then connectkan graph mapper punya N ni to the N and then another one to the V and then double click on the workspace again and then type uh, construct domain This one, construct domain. Dapat eh? Construct domain. Okay, construct domain ni and then kita kita connect to the T which is the target and then for this purpose kita akan try guna this range. Okay, apa yang kita tengah buat kat remap numbers ni kita tengah create a, a factor yang kita akan scale kan to the scale of the uh, frame ni nanti which is later kita akan nampak. Okay, for this purpose, for now, kita just type double click on the surface, uh, on the workspace to 0.5 and then connect by the A and then 1.0 and connect by the B. Okay, and then kita akan scale again the, the frame which is double click again on the workspace and then tekan scale. Okay, from this, uh, from this now, uh, okay kita akan scale kan the the, uh, the the geometry yang kita dah siapkan tadi which is this one. Okay. You guys can still follow. This is the geometry yang kita dah repeat tadi. Okay. Then geometry ni from G tekan and then connect pada G dekat sini. And then from the center point kalau nampak tadi YZ plane ni connectkan pada C which is the center point. And then R ni tadi is the remap values of the scale kita connectkan pada factor okay and then I want you guys untuk pergi dekat graph mapper ni right click pergi dekat graph types and then select bezier okay can off can uh, first of all then boleh off can preview from the previous one okay this is the shape yang kita dah tukarkan dia punya ni tadi eh Okay, graph mapper ni is the function that kita tukar dia punya value of scale tadi. In this case, let's say lah kita play with the form untuk B jadi this direction. 
You guys can just follow dia punya type uh, dia punya types of graphic ni. Okay, you guys akan dapat this form. Next one yang you guys yang kita akan buat is kita akan try rotate kan this uh, this form. Kita akan rotate kan frames ni to a different types of rotation so that they can create a more interesting form. Okay, what we going to do is I want you guys to copy, select these three component, remap, bounds and domain tadi. Control C and Control B. Tarik dia ke tepi. Okay, biar je dulu dekat situ for a while. And then double click on the workspace and then type rotate, R-O-T-A-T-E. Rotate. Okay. And then dari G tadi from the geometry, G ni is connect to the geometry on the rotation. And then on the A, angle ni right click and go to degrees. Kita tukar dia punya rotation in degrees. Okay. And then for points, P ni is dia punya planes. Kita ambil dari YZ plane ni tadi, connect by the P. Okay. And then for rotation, kita nak try, kita nak create a range of rotation. Double click on the workspace and then type zero, enter and then again, double click on the surface, on the workspace and then type 180. Zero ni type pada connect pada A and then 180 connect pada B. Okay, now kita dah ada remap values untuk lima rotation and then R ni connect pada A which is the angle. And now dekat scale ni you guys boleh off. Okay now kita dah dapat form yang dah uh, frames yang dah rotate in a different uh, in a different degrees and dia correlate dengan uh, the value yang you guys dah input tadi which is this one. Maksudnya dekat sini is zero maksudnya the frame yang first ni dia akan start dengan zero rotation and then dia akan gradually pusing, pusing, pusing up to 180 degrees. At this stage, if you guys nak tukar dia punya angle, let's say lah from this 180, you guys nak tambah lagi angle dia. Boleh nampak? Dia boleh tambah lagi angle and then maksudnya kita dah create rotation yang lagi lagi banyak which is let's say lah 360 degrees. Nah, this is a 360 degrees rotation. Let's say lah uh, hanya up to 90 degrees. 90 degrees rotation from the from the start until the end. Okay, tapi this one kita tak nampak lagi sebab it's just a frame. Now kita akan try jadikan dia as form which is the surface eh. For now I just stick with 180. Okay, next thing yang you guys have to do is double click on the workspace in the last of all and then type LOF, L-O-F-B. And enter and then connectkan G to the C. Off pen geometry. Click on the geometry, uh, on the rotate, right click, off come preview and then now you guys ada loft third surface. From the loft third surface ni pun kita boleh tukar dia punya change, kita boleh change dia punya uh, dia punya angle macam tadi. And now dia akan ada banyak rotation. 0.5 and 1.0 ni is dia punya scale of the frame ni tadi yang kita dah scale kan which is maksudnya dia 0.5 smaller uh, and then at the end is 1.0 uh, in scale maksudnya 1 to 1. Let's say lah you guys boleh change dia pada zero, less than 0 0.5. Let's say 0 0.1. And then kita boleh change the graph mapper. Kalau kita nak different shapes. This one you guys boleh boleh explore sendiri lah. Maksudnya boleh main-main sendiri. Which shape you guys nak. Let's say lah for this stage kita nak tukar jadi macam ni. And then even kita can go even in the first in the first uh, definition tadi pun. Maksudnya let's say lah kalau tiba-tiba you guys nak tukar dia punya uh, count of frames yang kita nak. Kita boleh tukar from 50 ni, kita boleh elongate kan lagi. Kita boleh uh, kita boleh tukar dia punya segment. Macam let's say kita nak tukar pada triangle. Now dia jadi a rotation of triangle panel. Then dia boleh jadi square. Dia boleh jadi hexagon and dia boleh jadi octagon. So for now kita stick with uh, hexagon. So this is the beauty of Grasshopper lah. Maksudnya dia boleh change the DNA of the design in the first place. That's how I like to coin it lah. Maksudnya kita change dia punya DNA and, it, and then dia terus jadi. It's not like kita create balik all the protrusion, all the solid and everything. So this is the beauty of architecture which is the, the, the programming part. Actually this is this is a prog programming lah. Tapi dia bukannya, it's called visual programming. Dia bukannya programming yang macam kita buat untuk coding macam C++ and everything. This is called visual programming. All in this component ni semua dah ada all the fighter and all the C++ tu. So it would be easier untuk kita do the, the, the programming. 
So this is a kira cara yang lebih cepat lah to 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 code it. Okay, now since kita dah di loft surface ni, this is a form yang kita akan stick for today. Kita akan move on how untuk kita buat parametric facade pula. Okay, I want you guys untuk select all the uh, all the components yang kita dah buat hari ni. Select semua and then right click, tekan group. Okay, now kita tahu this group is untuk surface. Okay, double click on the workspace and then try type scribble. Type scribble, double click on the double click me tu and then type surface. And then okay, so that you guys tahu ni, this is for the surface. And then, masuklah dekatkan dia dekat dalam room ni. Okay, then kita akan start with uh, the form making eh, dia, dia punya uh, facade, uh, parametric facade. Okay. Uh, for today's exercise, kita akan guna uh, hexagonal uh, facade and hexagonal facade ni is, is just a matter of a pattern je. Maksudnya you guys boleh pilih any pattern yang you guys want after this. Uh, the, this is where the plug-in of uh, lunchbox will come is in place. I want you guys to double click on the workspace in Grasshopper and then type hexagon. They can keluar hexagon cells. Okay, they can keluar this component. Okay, and then from the lofted surface ni tadi, loft surface ni, L ni you guys can connect pada SRF which is surface. Okay, then dia terus akan ada jadi this uh, grid of hexagonal grid dekat dekat surface tu tau. Dia akan terus create the panel of the uh, hexagonal grid. Tapi kita nak a different number of panels which is the U and V, which is the direction of the uh, the grid. So let's say kita try for, in this case our ID is 50. Okay, 50, double click on the grasshopper and then oops, sorry. double click on the grasshopper and then type 50, enter, connectkan pada V and then again, double click on the grasshopper, type 50, enter, connect pada V. Okay, now kita ada 50 by 50 punya U and V uh, uh, grid. So, okay, now kita dah ada hexagonal pattern. Apa yang kita boleh buat dengan hexagonal pattern ni? Okay, first of all, I would like you guys untuk uh, do this first which is uh, sorry. Okay. okay, double click on the workspace and then type surface closest point. Ambil this uh, component to be closest point and then double click again and then tekan evaluate surface. This component, evaluate surface. Okay. okay, from these two components, I want you guys to ambil from the lofted surface ni L, connect by the S which is surface and then L juga connect by the S on this one, on surface dekat, dekat, dekat surface closest point and then kalau nampak this is UV point, UV ni I want you guys to click and then connect kan by the UV on this one, on the uh, evaluate surface and then kalau nampak dekat hexagonal cells ni dia ada center point. This is the center point of the hexagonal cells and then center point ni kita letak pada P. Okay. Apa yang you guys just create is kita just create a plane untuk setiap hexagonal cells ni. Kalau you guys boleh off kan lofted surface ni. Right click and then off preview. Okay. Kalau boleh nampak this is, kita dah, kita dah cari the plane of each uh, hexagonal cells which later can be very useful untuk kita generate kita punya facade. Okay. Now, apa yang kita akan buat is kita akan try protrudekan uh, hexagonal cells ni into uh, a different uh, types of facade. Okay. What you guys are you, what you want to do is double click again on the grasshopper and then tekan type move move and then tekan uh, amplitude double click and then type M A M amplitude this component okay and then for this purpose I want you guys to, to, to double click and then tekan negative type negative okay, okay sekarang ni from cells hexagonal cells tadi I want you guys, want you guys to connect cells ni pada geometry. This is the geometry movement tadi kita nak buat. And then from the negative value ni tadi, 
connectkan kepada T dia punya target dan dia punya motion vector tadi and then V ni is the vector kita connectkan kepada negative and then kalau nampak dekat uh, evaluate surface ni ada satu komponen nama dia normal N which is the vector yang perpendicular to each to uh, each of the plane dekat hexagonal cell tadi connectkan kepada V and now kita dah dapat dia punya movement Okay, now amplitude ni is dia punya value of berapa banyak dia nak click, dia nak dia nak move towards the normal vector tadi which in this case kita letak let's say lah for one. Double click on the surface and then click one, type one and then enter and connect to the amplitude. Okay, now off kan surface, right click on the surface closest point and surface evaluation tadi, yes boleh off kan and then surface uh, poly one size ni boleh off kan. Okay, now kita dah dapat a protruded, uh, protruded plane, protruded curve yang from dari from the originals. So kita dah movekan dia sikit ke atas. Okay, next what I want you guys to do is double click on the surface and then type scale. Okay, scale. Okay, from this scale, from this one, I want you guys to connectkan cells to the G, to the geometry, and then center point ni tadi from the external cell to the C and then the factor value ni kita nak go for 0 0.9 double click on the surface and then tekan 0 0.9 and then connect kepada F okay, sekarang kita tak nampak lagi apa yang tengah jadi tapi but 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 uh, just be sure that everything is okay don't worry kalau nampak dia macam serabut ke apa dia memang macam ni yeah, later dia akan come to please Okay, sekarang kita dah dapat the scale value 0 0.9 lagi kecil, smaller daripada original pattern tadi. Okay, now next thing yang you have to do is uh, click on the scale and then control C, control V so that kita, uh, kita boleh copy je uh, scale, scale component tadi. And then from the G, I want you guys to connect G yang move tadi, yang dah move tadi. Connect kepada geometry yang new one, new geometry. Okay. And then scale factor ni SF ni tadi kita nak tukar a new scale factor. Let's say kita nak go for 0 0.5. Click and then enter. Connectkan kepada F. Okay, now kita dah kecilkan surface uh, curve yang dah move tadi to 0 0.5. Uh, to 0 0.5 smaller daripada dia punya original size. Okay, apa yang kita akan buat next is kita akan weavekan the pattern which is component weave. Double click on the surface uh, and on the workspace and then tekan W E A V E weave. Okay, and then control V, control C and control V again. So kita dapat dua types, uh, dua komponen weave ni. And then from the zero, kalau nampak uh, the first weave ni tadi, kalau you guys hover dekat zero, I want you guys to right click and then tekan graph. Same thing juga dekat number one, tekan graph. Okay, dapat? Okay, and then you guys have to connectkan from G yang bawah ni tadi, G yang dah kecil ni tadi, geometri yang dah kecil ni, I want you guys untuk connectkan kepada number one yang bawah. Okay, and then kalau nampak yang the first, uh, the first uh, another one yang dah scale ni tadi, G ni tadi create letak kepada zero. Okay. And then, the next yang with yang lagi satu ni do the same thing juga. Kita graphkan dia. Right click on the zero, select graph. And number one pun, right click on the one and then select graph. Okay. And then dari cells ni tadi, hexagonal cells. Ambil cells ni, connect to the zero. And then from the geometry yang dah scale to 0 0.9 ni tadi, connect to number one. Sampai sini. Okay, now apa yang kita buat, kita akan loftkan surface dia. Okay, double click on the workspace and then type L-O-F-T, -E, loft. And then, control C and control V, the loft component. Kita akan dapat dua loft. Okay, next thing I want you guys to do is select all these component yang before ni. The previous component, right click, preview of. So, dia akan tutup the preview of the component. Okay, now what you have to do is from this W yang kita dah weave and uh, curve tadi, connect kepada C. Okay, 
Okay. Now kita dah dapat lofted surface of the uh, of the frame of the hexagonal pattern ni. This is a more or less is a is a is a preview of the kita nak kekurangannya macam this facade ada this amount ada this thickness of frame supaya dia tak bercantum kan. Okay. And then the next one with ni juga kita akan create kita akan connect to the C which is the lofted surface tadi. Okay, now kita dah create dia punya facade panel. Okay, uh, so far kita akan nampak this is a bit susah nak, uh, it's a bit hard to 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 visualize lah sebab they, they, they still, they very translucent and everything susah nak nampak. So in terms of visual visualization, what you guys can buat, what you, can, what you guys can do is double click again on the grasshopper surface and then type uh, preview, preview. And then dia akan keluar this one component nama dia custom preview. And then next thing is double click again on the grasshopper and then type WSA, WS, WSWATCH swatch. It's color swatch, ambil component color swatch. Then from the lofted surface, the first one, connect kepada G. And then this, uh, this is a color palette lah sebenarnya. Just pick another any color. Double click on the color this one, and then just pick another color yang you want. For this for this exercise, I I, I will use this color untuk the frame, which is warna hitam. Okay, and then select these two component, and then Control C and Control V, and then connect kepada G yang lagi satu yang pada loft the surface yang lagi satu, and then you guys will change the color of the panel to a different color. Let's say lah for this one, I'm going for so and then off can this lofted preview. Okay. So far kita dah, dah reach uh, to the second milestone yang kita nak go for today. Are there any questions so far? Oh, any question? Is the model built in metric units? Uh, uh, in this case, uh, apa yang you guys boleh check is uh, for my for my preview ni sekarang, dia in metric unit sebab I've already set unit to meter. Maksudnya let's say lah kalau the, 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 the part yang I type radius ni kan, 5 ni kan. The previous, uh, the, from the previous component ni, 5 ni. For the radius, this maksudnya this is 5. Maksudnya dia, dia, dia dah scale for 5 meter of radius for this polygon surface. Let's say lah for the next thing is, uh, let's say lah dekat amplitude tadi, kita dah move kan dia punya protrusion ni tadi. For this Okay, kita tekan one kan. One ni, maksudnya tadi, this is one meter of protrusion of the panel. Maksudnya, this is one meter length. And this scale ni, this unit ni is is is, is changeable lah. Maksudnya, if you set this uh, units to be inches and then it can be inches, maksudnya dia akan go smaller lah. For this one, I go for your meter so that kita lebih senang nak perhaps sebab dia punya division is a bit, uh, is lebih regular lah. Tapi in terms of dia punya modeling units tu, no problem. It's just a matter of changing units macam kita buat dekat SketchUp, macam kita buat dekat CAD or Revit and everything. All this command. <laughs> uh, to remember all this command, dia takes uh, practice lah. <laughs> it's all take practice lah. Dia memang, it's very, it's very, dia very versatile lah. Dia, and there's a lot of varieties of commands, commands yang you can use. Tapi if you guys do it, uh, Two or three times, you guys can understand which command to use. So, but basically, uh, more or less, it's the same. Apa yang kita buat hari ni pun is not, uh, is not uh, too complicated lagi. Maksudnya ada command yang lagi pelik yang even I don't ever use. Uh, sekarang ni apa yang kita buat is a bit basic, but at the same time, uh, dia akan dia ada more versatility in terms of design. Maksudnya, you guys boleh boleh change everything, boleh tukar everything. Okay, next thing is kita akan try buat a different pattern uh, to a same to the same uh, form. Okay, kalau you guys pergi dekat on the grasshopper punya surface ni, uh, grasshopper punya workspace and then cuba tekan dekat lunchbox, L, B, eh sorry dekat L, L, lunchbox. Kalau nampak dekat lunchbox kat atas tu and then you guys pergi dekat drop down panels ni, ada nama panels and then tekan dia punya drop down menu and then they can keluar kan this menu. These are all the patterns yang you guys boleh buat using the same application macam tadi. It's just a matter of changing one component je. 
seen tadi this hexagonal cells kan. Eh? You see lah you guys nak explore diamond patterns, diamond panels. Then you guys get pick diamond panel ni and then connectkan dia punya uh, everything yang related dan uh, dia punya cells and centers ni tadi using the same applications. Let's say lah for let's say lah for uh, quad panels. Okay, this is quad panels. Okay, now kita boleh guna uh, kita boleh change to quad panels and then next one kita ada triangle panels pun sama. Kita takkan explore everything on the panels to, for today. This is up for you guys to explore. But more or less it's just a matter of changing this one and then reconnecting kan balik uh, all the connection before. But everything they, they, they apply the same concept. Apa-apa pun dia sama je. Cuma it's a matter of different components and different pattern. Okay next one kita akan go a bit different in terms of pattern. The, the pattern is a bit irregular. It's a, it's a bit irregular compared to hexagonal hexagonal pattern. But dia punya forms and dia punya uh, form ni kita takkan tukar. Form ni akan sama. Just a matter of changing the pattern. Eh? The next pattern yang kita akan guna is uh, is called Voronoi pattern. Okay. The first to preview ni from the first one you guys uh, uh, you can select and then preview off. Okay then kita akan model this one. Okay. Double click on the workspace in the grasshopper and then type Voronoi. And then select surface Voronoi. They can keluar this shape. Okay. And what I want you guys to do is pergi dekat lofted surface ni tadi. Lofted surface yang awal-awal tadi. Yang hanya surface saja without the panels. Dapat eh? This one. Lofted surface ni. Connectkan L ni to the Voronoi surface. Okay, then dia akan create terus Voronoi pattern ni to the surface. Okay, dapat. Okay. Uh, what is Voronoi ni? You guys, uh, I will I will not be going into detail for today sebab it's just a matter of, it's just a pattern je. Tapi you guys boleh uh, boleh boleh research on uh, on Voronoi. Apa Voronoi, kat mana ada Voronoi and everything. But this is one of the special thing yang you guys boleh buat in Grasshopper. One of the uh, automated automated pattern yang you can you, you guys boleh buat. And then Voronoi ni dia perlukan seeds which is points untuk dia generate the pattern. So apa yang you guys have to do is double click on the, space, on the workspace and then type let's say 100 less than, symbol less than tu, 300. And then enter. And then from this slider ni tadi, connectkan to the number. Okay, now cuba try slide kan number ni. Dia akan create lagi banyak warna pattern on the surface. Okay, dapat? Okay, let's say lah for this one, I would stick to 150. Macam ni dia ada 500 and 150 uh, pattern kat sini. 150 uh, cells of Voronoi kat sini. Okay, next thing yang you want, you want you guys to do is double click on the workspace and then tekan curve. Curve and then connect kan to the curve. Curve to curve, connect. And then next thing is double click again on the workspace and type polygon center. And keluar this component and then connect kan curve me to the P. You can keluar polygon center. And then and when you guys untuk pergi dekat atas ni tadi ada dua komponen yang yang tadi yang kita dah buat which is the, the first one is evaluate surface and then the next one is surface closest point. Double click, select these two component, select one and then tekan shift, select pula yang evaluate, evaluate surface ni, control C and control V. Okay, kita akan dapat ni. Okay. Now these two component dia dah connected to the surface yang tadi so kita tak perlu tukar sebab dia, dia connected to the same surface. Cuma kita nak tukar dia punya points. Sebab tadi points dia dekat hexagonal points, hexagonal center points. Sekarang kita nak cari dia, kita nak ambil the points yang dari uh, Voronoi pattern ni which is kita ambil yang dekat CE ni. CE ni is the center point for the Voronoi ni. Connectkan kepada P. And then you guys boleh offkan these two components. Offkan for a while. Review off. Okay. 
next thing is more or less the same dengan apa yang kita dah buat tadi which is um, yeah, sorry oh I think I, I'll model the background sebab takut takut tak faham uh, okay double click on the surface and then tekan amplitude select amplitude and then connectkan n normal to the v to the vector and then amplitude for the value of the amplitude, double click on the workspace and then tekan 1 connectkan to the A and then double click, tekan move and then connectkan V ni oh sorry, again uh, double click again on the uh, workspace and then tekan negative click negative selectkan V to the X and Y ni to the to the vector and then from the curve of the forerunner pattern ni tadi connectkan kepada G which is the geometry okay, kita dah move kan tadi and then kita akan do the same thing macam tadi kita akan guna scale scale and then copy paste scale ni okay and then from this geometry yang dah move ni tadi G to the G connect and then go to the center points yang kita dah buat tadi, center points ni connect to the C and then double click on the workspace type 0 0.5 connect to the connect to the factor okay and then from this G I want you guys to double click on the workspace type 0 0.9 then connect to the factor from the original surface ni, from the original curve ni tadi, curve volume ni, connect to the G and then center point to C. Okay. Then pergi naik atas ni tadi, connect semua yang hujung ni tadi. With, lofted, swatch and color sw uh, preview and color swatch. So, uh, just select everything, all these uh, eight components, control C, control D. Okay, and then drag to the bawah. Okay, for now then uh, hover on the grafted uh, on the wifty, hover right click and then tekan disconnect. Disconnect everything from the wifty ni. Okay, now kita dah copy this one. Kita akan apply pula pada warna pattern ni. Okay, from this G, oh sorry, uh, from this original curve, Warna naik curve ni tadi, tarik, connect to number zero and then this G, this geometry yang kita dah scale down dengan tadi to 0 0.9 to number one and then from this G go to zero yang bawah, width yang bawah and then the one yang kita dah scale kan 0, 0 0.5 tadi go to number one and then you guys boleh off kan everything yang dah preview before select everything yang on preview and then double click eh, right click and then preview off and then now you guys get to preview apa yang you guys dah buat on the Voronoi pattern can preview now you guys dah ada Voronoi frames ni tadi and then click on the panels preview okay. dah ada Voronoi pattern pula so I hope you guys can understand maksudnya tadi all the parts, all the protrusion, all the scaling and everything, all the weave yang kat atas ni sebenarnya sama je macam dekat atas ni. It's just a matter of changing dia punya yang bahagian depan on how the work pattern works. Okay. Select everything dulu and then you guys boleh group kan. Double right click and then group. Okay. okay. From now, let's say lah kita nak tukar Corona pattern ni to be lagi like dense. Go to the number of points yang awal-awal tadi Voronoi Then double click on the number yang kita dah tekan tadi which is 150 Let's say lah I want to go for 200 Tekan 200 And then dia akan automatically tambah Your Voronoi shapes ni tadi kepada 200 points Let's say lah you, if you want to go, to, to, to go simpler Just tekan 10 And then you can create a simpler version why uh, we are doing these shapes ni tadi, shape yang a bit elongated ni tadi 
is because uh, you know kan recently ada apa the first site design competition for uh, yang yang between PAM and RTS kan so basically this is a, a little bit of introduction on how you can design it lah so I hope benda ni can benefit you <laughs> even for practicing or even for students yang I can join this competition I hope this can benefit you in terms of how uh, what other designs that you can uh, you can think of in terms of uh, for the for the design competition I hope that could be uh, this could be this session could be an advantage for you guys uh, for for the competition okay now kita dah siap at this stage uh, sampai this sampai this uh, sampai this milestone okay what next is I want you guys to uh, I want to teach you guys on how to uh, macam mana kita nak contact uh, macam mana kita nak export kan export kan this uh, export kan the surface yang kita dah buat ni tadi the form yang kita dah buat ni tadi to other platforms macam SketchUp uh, and Revit tapi for this uh, for this time for, for for this class kita akan kita akan just connect kita akan just convert dia kepada SketchUp okay in Grasshopper and Rhino, dia ada satu term nama dia Bake. Macam apa yang Daniel cakap tadi is Bake. Bake tu tadi is about uh, it's about baking, it's about making uh, form yang kita dah buat ni tadi into a solid version. Maksudnya macam apa yang kita tengah buat ni tadi is just a custom preview tau. Dia tak ada apa-apa yang anything yang solid dekat Rhino version, dekat this Rhino workspace. Maksudnya if you pick anything kat Rhino ni tak boleh sebab it's just a preview from the grass software. Tapi apa yang you guys can do is from this preview session ni tadi, let's say lah from the Verona ni cuba click on the preview and then right click and then tekan bake. And then dia akan keluar this attribute. And when you guys untuk select layer number one and then tekan OK. Eh, oh sorry, before that layer number one tekan group, yes please and then tekan OK. Okay, then click on the custom preview, right click and then off preview. Okay. The next thing, same thing juga, pergi dekat the Boronai panel ni sendiri, preview, right click and then tekan bake. Go to layer number two and then groupkan, yes please and then okay. And then off kan the preview from the gasoto. Okay, only now this thing exists dekat Rhino. Maksudnya this is a solid solid components dekat Rhino. Maksudnya if you want to move kan this thing dekat Rhino boleh. See? Boleh paham kan? Okay, this is how dia dah jadi solid. Maksudnya from this baru kita boleh apply baru kita boleh convert kepada SketchUp kepada Revit and everything. Rhino is just a matter of designing but everything is still a preview. Dia semua preview. Dia bukannya solid lagi. So that's why kalau tengok file Rhino ni, eh file Grasshopper ni dia tak Dia tak berat. Dia memang very, very light. So this is just a definition. It's just the coding part. Anything yang solid, it comes in Rhino. So let's say lah, kita nak convert. Okay, apa yang you guys have to do first is uh, dekat Rhino, tekan file and then save file Rhino ni. Save lah to any, anywhere. Save lah, let's say dekat desktop. Click one. Okay, and then same juga dengan grasshopper ni tadi. Save dulu. So takut takut tertutup ke apa kan save to same, uh, kalau boleh to the same, to the same, uh, uh, to the same folder so that you guys boleh nampak ada two types of file. Maksudnya ada satu file, ada satu file Rhino and the other one is ada satu file uh, Grasshopper. Uh, what I do in practice is to make sure drama ni sama. In this case, kita tahu, okay, this one, one, na, na, nama yang nama ni, one dot 3dm is the file Rhino file and 1.gh ni is the grasshopper file. So later you guys kena buka dua-dua. So you guys buka the Rhino first and then tekan the grasshopper and then open the grasshopper file and then baru dia akan connected. So next kita akan tengok macam mana kita nak masuk ke grasshopper. Eh macam mana kita nak masuk ke SketchUp. Okay first thing yang you have to do is select everything kat Rhino. Kita select all the solids yang kat Rhino ni tadi. And then tekan file go to export selected. Okay. From export selected ni sebenarnya export lah. Kalau kita nak export and then go key select gas uh, SketchUp. Then let's say rename kan dia ni. One juga. Then tekan save. Oh okay. 
Uh, these are one of the things yang you have to understand when dealing with uh, Rhino and Grasshopper and kita nak export to other softwares. Bila nak bila nak export ni, uh, SketchUp especially, dia ada certain things yang uh, dia tak capable untuk 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 transport from uh, from Rhino to to SketchUp. But this is more a, a little bit of trial and error lah, trial and error. Because uh, uh, I also face this situation before. Maksudnya ada benda yang dia tak boleh export. But kita tengok yang this one kita akan uh, dia punya jadi dia macam mana eh. Uh, for this now, kalau if you guys keluar juga this uh, this 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 array then just tekan okay. Okay. Basically uh, dia dah still ada. Cuma kita akan tengok macam mana dia jadi. And then cuba buka file SketchUp masing-masing. And dah export dia tadi. Okay. Now kita dah ada dalam SketchUp. This component. Bear in mind macam I said just now tadi. Memang ada benda yang akan hilang especially when it comes to complicated stuff ataupun dia punya geometry dia sebit a bit weird and everything nampak kat sini ada, ada benda hilang ada benda, ada few things yang hilang I would suggest for the usage of Rhino ni is just strictly for for the for myself as so far that I, what I have been exploring is just for for making and for site making uh, in terms of floor plans and other conventional drawings I, I would stick to CAD drawing, SketchUp or uh, or Revit. Anything yang file making or anything yang facade making yang you need to be parametric, parametrically designed, you can do it in Rhino and Grasshopper. Tapi once to, to go, once you want to go to conventional drawings, not create floor plans, not create elevation, you, uh, I would prefer to go to other softwares yang lagi easier. Tapi in terms of diagram, let's say like if you want to create a diagram from, from this, from this, from Rhino, uh, it's very uh, it's very useful sebab uh, in terms of dia punya visualization it is is very easy. Kalau you guys boleh nampak, uh, dekat Rhino ni, kat atas ni ada perspective kan. Perspective and then tapi cuba drop down on the perspective and then tukar to rendered version. Okay. Now sekarang ni dia dah go for rendered version of the panel sebenarnya. So, tapi this one ni should be sebab Make sure dekat every preview ni tadi, kalau you guys dah ada right click on the preview, you guys nampak ada render and dia, dia tick kan. Make sure off kan yang lain and just on kan yang on the one yang you nak lah. On this one, I just want I just want to preview yang part Voronoi. This one is for the part Voronoi for the panels. So, dia dah render version. Okay. This could be your diagram. It uh, It's very helpful in in in, in Uh, diagram visual visualization kalau you guys nak go for for that so you guys boleh boleh explain all the new phase of design from 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 the from, from start to the end uh, let's say lah uh, you guys nak nak preview kan the curve dia tadi kan apa yang dia solid dia tadi you guys boleh just hide uh, <coughs> select all the solids you can tekan hide kalau you tak nak delete And then you guys, you just have to go to the first surface ni tadi yang warna nine preview. Okay, this is, this could be your, this could be your, apa? this could be your uh, diagram. And then let's say lah, if you want to preview yang dekat sini, this could be your diagrams and everything. Okay, so far everything okay. Kita akan jump to a different design part lepas ni. Kita akan go a bit environmental so that kita boleh connect So kita kan kita kita boleh take advantage of parametric design parametric design ni to to environmental design so that uh, it has some purpose. It's not just for for the aesthetics and for the formatics, tapi dia ada dia connected to the to the uh, environmental design. This is where kita akan guna ladybug analysis sendiri. Okay, first thing yang you have to do is okay if you guys using the ladybug yang I've been using, pergi dekat ladybug tab dekat atas ni and then go to drop down ladybug and then tekan ladybug the first component ni tadi ladybug underscore ladybug and then letak on your workspace okay send dapat tak? Uh, download file ni tadi download the file yang I've sent you to you guys uh, I've sent to you guys dekat whatsapp tu and then openkan dia and then dia akan keluar this macam ni This is uh, the component yang 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 terlibat in in doing uh, analysis of surface radiation. 
I will not go in detail. But tapi apa yang you guys you can do is select all, all of this component and then control C and then pergi dekat atas ni. Kalau nampak atas ni dah ada, dah ada dua types of file yang you, you guys dah buka. The first one and the one yang ladybug. And then select. Nampak eh? Kan yang ini ni and then select dekat your file. And then control V kat sini. And then you guys akan dapat this. I think probably juga dia akan suruh buka EPW file. I will share you guys the EPW file. Okay. Sama juga ni dekat WhatsApp. Dia okay, buka WhatsApp. And then kena uh, download the EPW file. And then once dia uh, prompt untuk keluarkan EPW file ni, select the location of EPW file yang you guys dah save tadi. This will take a bit of time. Dia akan processing lama sikit. Tapi I'm, I hope it's okay for everyone. Okay, this is the analysis yang kita akan buat and kita akan do the analysis on the surface yang kita dah create tadi. Which is the lofted surface of the elongated form yang dah berpusing tadi tu. Kita nak do a radiation analysis on the surface. Okay, apa yang I want you guys to do is pergi dekat surface, yang group surface yang kita dah buat tadi. Pergi dekat hujung sekali at the end of it ada loft surface ni. Okay, this is the loft surface yang kita akan buat. And then, double click on the workspace and type tap holes. Okay, and then type decon. And then, click deconstruct B wrap. Connectkan uh, B wrap ni tadi kepada B to the B wrap. And then, double click again and then tekan list item. Connectkan face of the B-Rap ni kepada list item and then double click again type number 2 connect kepada I. Oh, sorry. Connect kepada I. The next thing is ambil surface yang kita dah buat tadi daripada lofted surface from the original lofted surface and connectkan kepada B-Rap holes tadi. Kepada cap holes. And then off cam preview for cap holes you can deconstruct. Off cam preview. And then this is the surface yang kita akan guna for analysis. If you guys dah copy tadi yang lady bug analysis tadi, just connectkan from the SI of the surface to the geometry. Okay, and then preview kan dekat sini, dekat this one, from the radiation analysis ni, preview, dia akan keluar macam ni. Dapat tak? Dia akan keluarkan this result of analysis where each panels, each, uh, each uh, where the form study tu dia dah divide into panels and each panel tu dia dah analyze betapa berapa banyak radiation radiation yang kena dekat on the panels. This is based on the weather data yang I've supplied you tadi lah. Okay, apa yang kita akan buat dengan this thing is kita akan guna dia punya result of the of the radiation value ni tadi because if you can see, result dia ada very recent. So they're varying in terms of result, the radiation value. In terms of visual, visualization, kalau tengok yang merah ni, uh, technically dia akan, maksudnya dia akan lebih panas. Dia akan lebih panas daripada yang belah biru ni. Because dia on horizontal level and dia on top of dekat roof level. Maksudnya dia akan lagi panas compared to the, the bawah. Apa yang kita akan buat is kita akan create a facade panel yang vary into, yang vary depend, dia punya varies of scale tu depends on the 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 level of radiation value on the surface. The pretty final product there is like this. Kalau you guys boleh nampak, kalau tengok, circle ni, circle yang dekat belah yang warna merah, dia akan nampak, dia akan dia bigger compared to dengan uh, dekat yang bahagian bawah. So this is lebih parametric. Maksudnya kita dah ada satu variables yang boleh create uh, the panels to 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 react to the radiation values. And the radiation value ni is not uh, the way dia punya, the way this uh, variables acts tak semestinya dia depends on the radiation value je. Maksudnya you can you can justify and you can create other types of variables. But for this exercise, 
kita akan guna this environmental analysis kalau lady bug analysis ni on surface radiation untuk createkan the value of uh, parameters yang kita nak. Okay, how are we going to do that? Okay, I hope you guys dah sampai kat sini eh. Dah dapat this result. Kita akan exercise this one pula. This, I think this will be a bit faster. This a little bit just hit. Okay. Kita akan create a surface, uh, a circle panel on each surface ni tadi. Okay, first thing you have to do is click, double click on the surface, uh, on the workspace and tekan point. And then, pergi dekat test points and then connect ke kepada points. Okay. Next one is tekan circle, C-I-R-C-L-E. Circle and then connectkan points to the points of circles. And then make a radius, double click on the workspace, tekan 0.5. Connectkan to the radius of circle yang kita nak buat. Okay. At this moment, kita akan nampak each circle Uh, has been created dekat on each panel. Cuma dia tak rotate to a right direction of the panels. Maksudnya takkan kita nak all kita punya panels macam ni kan. Okay. What next is go to workspace and then tekan rotate. Ambil rotate direction. Okay and then connectkan C to the G. Okay. Kita nak rotatekan dia supaya dia betul-betul on the surface of each panel. Apa yang kita akan buat is can evaluate surface and next one is closest point surface closest point okay, these two and then UV point ni connect to the UV and then kalau tadi dah ada test points punya test point tadi kita connectkan kepada P And then S and S ni is for the surface tadi. Go to the lofted surface yang dari awal tadi. Then connectkan kepada S surface. Connectkan kepada S kat sini. Okay, sekarang kita dah dapat the panels on each. On each panels. Eh, kita dah dapatkan the plane on each panels. So apa yang kita akan buat is kita akan try rotation from the center ni tadi. Rotate ni. Connectkan point ni with the center point uh, to C okay and then double click and Z and the unit Z because sekarang ni kalau tengok all these all these uh, uh, all these circle ni dia tengah menghadap ke atas so kita kita tengah refer to dia punya direction of plane tu which is depan ke atas but that's why this V Z value and then go to the value surface and then go for the normals. Normals tadi is the surface yang perpendicular, uh, line yang perpendicular to the plane and then connectkan kepada T. And then off kan all the previous. Maybe off. Okay, now you can see all the circles tadi dia dah berada dekat plane yang betul. Dapat tak? Okay. Now kita akan try scale kan all these circles into a different scale yang react to the variables of the radiation value tadi. How are we going to do that is double click on the workspace and then tekan scale and then go for next one is remap remap numbers next one is bound bound Okay, and then construct okay. construct domain okay. these tiga these three components eh okay from these three component yang bounce tadi domain ni connectkan i dia to the s and then i from domain tadi construct domain connect kepada the t Okay. and then double click again on the workspace and then type 0.1 double click again and then you say go for 1.5 connect by the B okay 
from this rotation, uh, from this rotated circles yang kita dah buat tadi, connectkan kepada G and then pick the points, dia punya middle point yang kita dah buat yang tadi, yang kita dah dapat, the middle point of the circle ni tadi, connectkan kepada C and then R ni tadi is the remap values, remap numbers, connectkan kepada factor of the surface, of the circle yang kita nak scale kan, tapi sekarang ni kita tak ada value yang kita nak remapkan ni lagi apa yang kita akan buat is kita ambil radiation results kalau nampak kat sini dekat dekat play debug tadi ada satu uh, result nama dia radiation results and connectkan to the V and connectkan dia kepada N which is the bounds okay. if you guys with me nanti kalau you, kalau tak jadi you guys akan nampak the varying sizes of the scale of the circle ni tadi dia dah, kita dah create a multiple sizes of scale of circle circles yang relate to the uh, radiation result, the value of radiation result. In in design, it, it could be translated in this way. Maksudnya kalau area yang lagi panas, maksudnya dia ada more surface, dia akan ada lagi banyak surface of facade untuk cover. Hence, sepatutnya dia akan, maksudnya dia akan provide less, uh, dia akan provide more shades uh, to the buildings. That's how the, this this exercise is being translated lah. Maksudnya, how you can create pattern yang varying yang react to the variables of sun radiation value. And next thing is, double click on the workspace and then type custom preview, nak tukar dia punya color. Then double click again, tekan swatch. Color swatch. And from G, connect to the G. And then colour ni you guys boleh tukar tu apa-apa colour and then tekan to the M. Oops, sorry. Next thing is just tekan surface. And then click component surface and then connectkan to the geometry to the surface. And then surface ni to the G, to the geometry yang kita nak preview. And then off kan preview scale and off kan preview on the surface. And then you guys boleh off kan on the lady bug analysis. Now kita dah create the parametric circles yang vary to radiation results. And from this, you guys boleh change the punya scale to whichever you want. So let's say lah, I want it to be bigger. Oh, it's too big. Play with the slider lah. Okay, now dia akan jadi smaller. Let's say lah, I want to go for 2.0 Now maksudnya dia punya which is apa yang kita dah create dekat these three types dekat these three component is the range range of circles tu yang kita nak maksudnya from the original size of the uh, of the circle tadi which is 0.5 meter ni tadi kita dah scale down dia to, to the smallest maksudnya the smallest one is akan jadi 0.1 smaller scale and then the biggest one yang dia akan go yang dia akan scale is two times larger So this one let's say lah, tukar to one to one. Maksudnya dekat sini one to one is the biggest one is 0.5 meter and the smallest one is 0.1 times smaller to, to to the original size. Okay. So I hope you guys will understand so far. Everything. Sebab kita dah nak go for I think in terms of exercise kita dah sampai sini. Kita dah sampai to the end. And I think kita akan open for Q&A session for 30 minutes if you guys need. Any questions so far? Okay, um, I have a question. Ah, okay. Um, just now when you bake into SketchUp, right? Okay. Is the model in SketchUp grouped up? Is it grouped up as well? Uh, if you group, oh. group it up dekat uh, Rhino, then dekat dalam SketchUp pun dia uh -huh. akan group. Tapi kalau dekat oh, Rhino okay, tak okay. group, dekat sini tak akan group. Hmm. Tapi what else yang you can do, kalau let's say lah tak group dekat SketchUp, let's say lah kalau you guys nampak MSQ ni kan, This one actually dia tak group kan. What you have to do is just select and then select 
all with the same layer or the same, same materials. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Uh, then kita boleh select lah. Alright. Okay, any other questions? Maybe kalau, maybe in terms of apa yang kita buat hari ni, you guys can boleh watch. Tapi maybe you guys ada any other questions yang maksudnya in terms of design yang you guys want to do yang if you like to know is it possible tak untuk buat dekat Rhino. And then you guys can boleh, okay, you can ask me or you can you can show me. Okay. I think there's a question by Nadia. If you really have the building form on SketchUp, how to shape the facade following the size of our building? Macam kena export building tu dalam Rhino dulu ke? Hmm. Okay. How will you do uh, that? Yes. Kita boleh do that. Tapi it could be a little bit problematic. Uh, depends. It depends on the punya shape. Uh, depends on the shape of your SketchUp. Let's say lah, like, in SketchUp, uh, I will show you one exercise eh. They say lah, they say lah, this is just a just a simple model. Kita nak buat surface yang cylindrical surface. They say this is the types of building yang you guys, yang you dah ada dekat dalam SketchUp kan. Macam mana you guys nak, macam mana you want to export ni kepada uh, Rhino. When it comes to a simple shape macam ni, it's possible. Maksudnya kita boleh definitely ambil this one untuk jadi uh, surface dalam 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 Rhino. Tapi let's say lah if you guys have building yang lagi lagi uh, lagi complicated. Contoh macam ada shapes yang lagi banyak, lagi banyak segmented. Uh, lagi di, di lagi banyak segments means lagi banyak types of surface yang you have to to do. Contohnya macam let's say lah I'm going to model something dekat Rhino sekarang. What I'm doing right now is a model dalam Rhino. This is a surface dalam Rhino. Anything yang you export to Rhino, dia akan keluar, kalau dia surface saja dia akan keluar macam ni. Let's say like this come from SketchUp which is possible. And this is one surface. Apa yang you guys can do is, double click on the workspace ni and then type surface. Then dia akan dapat satu surface. And then right click on the surface and then set one surface and then select this, this panel. So maksudnya sekarang, you guys dah uh, linkkan surface yang dari Rhino tadi masuk ke Grasshopper. It's not just physical je sekarang. Dia dah code kan the surface untuk jadi Grasshopper punya surface. Faham tak? Faham? Huh? Tapi in this case, let's say lah if your building ada empat surface. So let's say lah just a box. Dia ada empat surface macam ni. Satu, satu surface dua surface, tiga surface, empat surface ialah yang yang horizon yang vertical. Ada times yang you guys have to copy four types of surface ni macam ni. Maksudnya this surface need to be represented by one surface, this surface need to be represented by one surface, this surface need to be represented by one surface. And then, only then, you guys boleh pergi, let's say lah, kita nak apply hexagon grid ni. Baru dia boleh go for hexagon grid. Tapi dia akan limited to this kat sini je. Sebab it's just, dekat dia, dia akan detect this is one surface. Sebab bila box, dia tak boleh nak create benda tu as one box. Ada cara dia tapi in this case, dia they, they, not exactly one box. Dia they, they, they akan be separated to four surface. Sebab dia tak boleh baca everything. Tapi bila dalam Rhino, let's see lah if you guys create a box. This is not a surface. This is a B-Rack. 
you can be red and click be red and then select one be red and then I select this one again so this it dah jadi a be red dalam 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 grasshopper if I do this let's say be red ni I connect to the surface dia tak boleh baca sebab this is a whole box dia tak boleh baca sebab sebab dia punya konsep of the surface tu dia tak betul dia, sebab, dia ada six surface dia tak boleh nak baca six surface dia kau ni baca one surface so that's why dekat polygon yang kita buat tadi lofted surface ni this is one all one surface because kalau tengok dekat polygon yang awal-awal tadi kita ada buat fillet radius bila kita buat fillet radius maksudnya kita dah bulatkan all the edges and everything comes into one bila everything comes into one, then baru kita boleh apply the whole pattern to the whole surface. Tapi as long as the edgy macam ni, then it's it's quite uh, harder lah, it's harder to do it. Boleh faham? Nadia? Ya, yeah, faham. Faham eh? Okay. Okay. Tapi uh, saya tanya, sorry. No, sorry, saya tanya. Okay, let's say kalau macam uh, kan tu dah ada yang has again punya form tu kan? Okay. And then Uh, I want to put it on my, let's say, my my box, which is my building. Can it like be dragged? Okay. Boleh ke so macam okay. ambil tu? Boleh ke I make hexagon yang dah buat tu kan? And this, okay. yang, uh, this one. And then macam apply it uh, onto our uh, box, which is the building. Boleh, tak ada masalah. Cuma, macam tadi lah. Macam I said just now. Let's say lah your building is a box kan? Ya. Yeah. Maksudnya, your box tu let's say lah ada four surface and four different surface for different angles apa yang you have ya apa yang you you, uh, you can do is refer one surface ni individually apa maksudnya one surface of a side is one surface one surface of a side is one surface let's yeah, say Maksudnya macam ni, um, saya tak nak uh, dia punya hexagon tu dalam bentuk surface, dalam bentuk uh, plane. Dia macam, I want, I want my facade to be like that shape but it will flow, it will cover up the whole box. Oh, <laughs> right. Macam skill, I think it's like, big is it like you rotate that shape up or something? Like your uh -huh. kind of, like, I think, I mean. Oh, macam uh, boleh, yeah. boleh, tak ada masalah. It's a rotation. It's, 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 a, it's a matter of uh, creating a surface for me yang tak bounded by the edges. Faham tak maksudnya? Uh, let's say lah macam tadi kan. Yang hexagon yang kita buat tadi. Yang dari awal tadi. Uh, let's say lah without fillet radius. Okay, let's say lah I change this to... Oh, this is apa yang, this is not what we punya korang dah buat eh, this is a bit different Okay, imagine this is uh, the box here. You uh, is your. They say this is your building, kan? Tapi dia petak. Okay, kalau kita off kan fillet radius ni, kalau nampak dia akan jadi edgy on dia punya surface. Okay, saya lah akan change itu and itu satu zero. Jadi this is the building box, kan? If I want to apply a facade dekat sini Kalau nampak Dia akan a bit difficult sebab Kalau let's say I Is this how you want it? Macam ni ke? Yeah, something like that Something like this Okay, kalau perasan uh, Dia boleh buat tapi dia ada different step lah. Dia, ada, dia takkan masuk direct sebab dia kena dari empat surface tu tadi dia kena breakkan the surface itu individually and then baru kita boleh supply dia to the surface yang dekat hexagon ni. 
Something macam ni. Walaupun dia edgy. Tapi dia different kalau dia ada feeling radius, dia akan dia akan dia akan detect benda tu as one surface. Bila dia one surface, dia takkan kita tak perlu nak kita tak perlu nak breakkan dia into individual surface. Boleh menjawab soalan kan tadi? Kita tak menjawab, menjawab uh, tak menjawab, menjawab, faham. Cuma menjawab, dia faham. Dia, faham. Uh, uh. dia akan jadi a bit pelik. Bukanlah pelik. It's just nampaklah nanti. Kalau tadi kalau yang bulat nanti dekat sini dia akan nampak lawa kan. Dia akan nampak ke dia lawa. Tapi dekat sini dia akan break lah. Dia akan break dia punya pattern dekat sini. Which still 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 applicable to building. Tak ada masalah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, can this software can be input into Revit? Boleh. Ya, yeah, boleh juga untuk input to Revit. They say lah macam kita dah kita dah bake tadi kan. This is the one yang kita dah bake. Apa yang you guys can do sama juga. Selectkan all these things yang you have baked and then export, select it to uh, acis.sat. This is the file yang you guys akan bawa pergi Revit. Okay, then open your Revit. Is it possible to bake the sun radiation analysis? Huh? Boleh. With, all the, with Boleh. all the colors as well? Boleh, yes. Oh, okay, yes. So, it will show up also in SketchUp with, with yes, all the colors. Let's oh, go okay. to the sun radiation preview. And then right click, bake. Hmm. Open, yes. Uh, then, sun radiation akan jadi a model. Oh, okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. And then you guys will off it. Eh? So ni lah, this could be your diagram lah later. Macam ni lah. Hmm. Everything, most uh, most of the components boleh bake lah. Tapi ada lah certain things yang tak boleh bake sebab dia bukan, dia, bu dia tak define any shapes or any physical things. Tapi benda-benda macam ni, dia boleh bake. Hmm. Okay. Kalau nak masukkan rabbit tadi, pergi ke insert, import cat. And then go to your file yang dah ACT tadi. File types to change to ACES. Select and open. See? Dah masuk Revit. So, tapi dia depends lah. Ada certain things lah. Ya, dia, dia for sure lah. Lagi complicated, dia lagi susah lah nak convert. But in this case, it's, it's still doable. So, dia tak ada masalah. But akan ada issue juga where you guys have to bila dekat Revit, dia susah nak uh, dia susah nak tukar materials. Kita tak boleh nak tukar Kita boleh tukar materials tapi it's a bit difficult sebab dekat sini dia dah jadi sama. So apa yang you guys boleh buat is tukar dia punya materials and dia punya layer dekat Rhino. When dekat Rhino, bila dekat Rhino ni dia dah different layer and different let's say lah, I would suggest dekat Rhino ni terus tukar color of the layer uh, or the materials yang you guys nak the same color yang masuk dalam Revit. Sebab once dia dalam Revit, dia dah a bit harder untuk tukar color. Understand? Yes, another question also. Does Rhino require any external plugin, much uh, as SketchUp, to create a more complicated form? More complicated form. Uh, apa yang you guys have been using ni tadi, macam lunch box, macam uh, ladybug tu, is is considered as a plugin lah. And there are so many other pl plugins that you can do that you can use. Kalau tengok from mine is uh, kalau tengok WB ni is Weaverbird. Weaverbird ni is for mesh. Apa yang kita nak buat dalam mesh, uh, in mesh uh, punya, in mesh setting. Mesh ni is something yang, dia macam surface tapi dia lagi, dia capable of doing it to be to, to be more complicated sebab dia lagi, dia lagi ringan. Ada juga macam kangaroo nama dia. Kangaroo ni is for uh, structural design untuk kita buat structural design, untuk test structural design uh, for let's say macam Karamba, karamba ni pun for structural design. Macam skin designer ni is for cosmetic design. Depends on how you want to approach your forms. Maksudnya, uh, different forms of course, dia akan ada different codings yang relate to it lah and different types, different way to do it. Apa yang kita do today, apa yang we did today is uh, is strictly on lunchbox and grasshopper, eh, lunchbox, grasshopper and ladybug saja. 
Tapi I will suggest you to explore a plugin yang lain macam especially Weaverbird. Weaverbird this one. Weaverbird and Mesh Plus. It's called Mesh yeah, Mesh Plus. Boleh tengok dekat link tadi Food for Rhino ni. Dekat Food for Rhino ni kita boleh buka and then you guys boleh download all the plugins yang unique. Ada butterfly and macam-macam lagi lah. Dia dia endless lah. Memang tak sempat nak nak explore semua. Depends on what you want to do. This one question. Will we okay. be able to generate a skeleton from the form we made on Grasshopper to make it Boleh. look as a form of structure? Boleh. Kita nak jadi structure. Let's say lah, okay, the simplest form lah kita nak buat. Kita nak buat piping structure eh. Alright. Kita dah ada curve, kita nak akan jadikan the structure. This is the structure yang dah jadi tadi, cuma dia punya radius tadi tak betul. Uh, bear in mind, the more, lagi like, advance your definition, your grasshopper definition, lagi berat dia punya generate, dia punya preview to generate. Macam in this case, pipe ni tadi, pipe punya component ni a bit, uh, it's a bit heavy bila dia nak apply to grasshopper, uh, to rhino. Sebab dia kena generate uh, banyak sangat surface lah. So, if anything later, if you guys buat definition yang rasa dah berat, at the end dia macam dah lambat a little bit, uh, uh, to be slow to preview, make sure it's safe and then ataupun apa yang you guys can do is still stuck. Too heavy. Uh, <laughs> this one is a bit heavy. Uh. This, uh, this, software is this software run on CPU is it? Yeah, CPU mostly. Uh, not, not GPU kan? Not GPU. <laughs> so okay. the better your CPU, the better your performance. Uh. Ah, okay. So this is the, dia dah jadi skeletal structure dia lah. Tapi adalah some certain things yang I have to set up lagi supaya dia punya edges dia tak, supaya edges dia tak macam ni lah. So this is, this could be your, 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 your structural design macam tu lah. Dia, 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 dia banyak types of, banyak uh, components yang you can use untuk, untuk, untuk generate. Anything you want, is, it, but it takes a lot of time to understand which one to use. So you really have to go to internet and say, oh, channel, how to do this, how to do this, how to do this. And but but fortunately, memang banyak a lot of tutorials that you can you can follow on the internet. And uh, what I suggest is, if you already know what you want to do, macam let's uh, any types of a site or any types of form you want to do, just search the internet, macam mana nak buat, and follow the like hundred percent how they do it. Follow first, sampai jadi and then bila dah jadi tu and then baru you guys backtrack balik and tengok kat mana you can change to make it your own. In fact, uh, this definition, uh, it can be uploaded from internet tu. Maksudnya there are certain people yang memang yang memang share this, uh, share this the grasshopper definition untuk other people to use. Itu pun, uh, that can be done and it's not a plagiarism or anything. So it's just, um, it's a coding yang you can you can use in order to create your own design. Although it has a uh, this, uh, the same application, tapi you can still make it your own as long as uh, you tweak here and there. Uh, what I did in the first place memang macam tu. Maksudnya I try to refer apa yang dah orang dah buat and then learn from apa yang orang dah buat tu and then tweak je. Download je everything. Semua dah ada dekat internet. So don't worry. Macam uh, as long as probably even, even some advanced definition pun dah ada dekat on the internet and you guys boleh download and then go back and learn balik daripada apa yang dah set. Like, like this one, nanti later I'll, I'll send to you guys this file untuk you guys tengok balik apa yang kita dah buat hari ni and ada certain things extra, ada some, ada some extra things juga yang boleh you guys boleh tengok. Okay, so if there are no questions, I think we can end our session here. Alright, um, so I hope that everyone learned a few new things today. Sorry if it was a bit fast. But don't worry, we have we'll get the videos to you uh, shortly once we upload it to YouTube. Uh, we also have previously we had two classes with uh, Noramin as well, so that was a, a bit more. Um, I think for beginners, uh, starters is quite okay to learn as well. Then maybe on, you can carry it with this video. So uh, I would like to thank on behalf of uh, the organizers for Recursive Studio. We would like to thank all of you for attending this workshop today. Uh, we hope it sparks some ideas uh, for your future design um, in parametric designing. Um, 
As uh, Amin mentioned, there's a competition by Pam. <laughs> Maybe you can check that out. The first prize is 250k. <laughs> yeah. If you're up for it. <laughs> yeah. So I think the the uni is organizing it. Uh, they're trying to get, um, I think trying to get some submissions in as well. So we'll see how that goes uh, in the future. And other than that, if you need any further um, assistance or any questions, uh, do feel free to ask us in the WhatsApp group. We'll be there to, to help you out. And yeah, kalau anyone nak buat private workshop with Ramin pun boleh. Bincang lah dengan dia. He's more than, more than happy to help you guys. So, okay. Uh, with that, we'd like to end the session. Thank you, everyone, and take care. Okay, thank you, everyone. Okay.